Welcome back uh, to the marketplace. Last week we started a series on financial planning. It was quite insightful. And while well, this week we're beginning a new one on managing your business in an austere economy, joining me in a studio to start off as of is Gordon Dade, who is senior manager tax unit KPMG. I uh, appreciate your time with us. Welcome to our studio. And so uh, we want to first tackle uh, the, the topic of austerity and what it means, because we've got that word going around, uh, especially during these times. And what relation it has to do with uh, taxes? All right. Um, thank you, Daryl, for you know, having me today in your studio. And uh, when we talk about austerity, austerity has to do with at a period where you have high uh, debt levels and, and and at this time, government will look at different tools to use to manage the debt levels. And so normally, uh, tax is one of the I mean, things that people normally talk talks about. But um, if you look at specifically the Ghanaian situation, um, mm -hmm. we already have a number of tax handles in, in, in place. So we don't expect to see a lot of taxes. But what we see in these times is government's drive towards more of a tax compliance culture and trying to ensure that taxpayers are, are compliant, businesses are complying to their tax obligations. So you see somewhere around November, December last year, government started what they call the V18 vigilation exercise. Mm -hmm. And that exercise, of course, they, they announced that they got some revenue um, from that. Of course, they've, they've tried to hold on the process, but we, would, we expect that uh, we'll see more of a compliance thing and more tax audits in periods like this, because government will need more, uh, do more to, to uh, mobilize more revenue uh, to bridge the gap that we have um, currently. I mean, when people hear austerity, what business is the something, or that means you're going to pay some more taxes. Is that what it really means? Yeah, so like I said, I mean, obviously, of course, because your, your, your revenue is down and um, your, your debt levels are high, you want to find ways to raise more revenue. And if you look at the Ghana situation, raising revenue, obviously, is tax. Uh, but again, we, like I'm saying, we are, don't, we are not expecting government to impose new taxes. We already have a lot of tax handles in the country, and therefore, we know that governments, the work that they've already begun somewhere last year, they are going to continue and intensify their drive towards um, widening the tax net. And if I talk about widening the tax net, there are, no, there are a number of things government can do, okay, to do that. So there's one particular thing that we talk about, uh, what we call, we call the import chain ladder. Now, let me take my time to explain this to you. So import chain ladder, uh, where it, uh, this means if you take an importer, maybe the, those who import, let's say for argument's sake, uh, iron rods in this country, if one person, if you, if you are able to identify the first 10, okay, major importers, and then you also identify the first 10 layers of people that they also import and they also sell to when they bring their goods into the country, what that means is that um, you are able to track how much iron rods came into the country, who they sold to, and of course you can build up the, the revenues that are going to accrue to those people and the cost that comes. So, so before these people come to pay their tax to you, GRA will, have, will already have information on them. And that will, be a, that will be a long way to help you to um, go tax assessment and know how much revenue people are, are, are making. All right, let's just talk, talk about uh, budget for businesses. Um, usually around this time, I'll be surprised if they haven't already mm. uh, drawn up their annual budgets. But what do, uh, how do businesses set their annual budget, especially during these times? Yeah, so, so of course, this, this is a very challenging time and this is a very difficult time. But as a business, one of the things you want to do is to do an evaluation of your, of your activity. So mm. if you are doing budget, you want to look at your cost lines, you want to look at your revenue lines, you want to say, okay, so all these cost lines that I have, uh, which of them can I put on hold? Or which of them can I be more efficient towards? So for instance, uh, when COVID struck the whole world, I mean, we all realized that even working from home was another medium that we were using. So today, if you're a business and for instance, you have an office space that you are renting, that you are using in these difficult times, you want to ask yourself, do I want to continue paying all the rent for this space or do I want to get some of my staff to work from home? Mm -hmm. if, you, if you are able to go through this process with thorough analysis, then you know that, okay, some of these expenses that you are paying, you can actually reduce them. If you look at an expense like uh, tra uh, transportation, travels, okay, people who travel outside the country to go and do trainings and all that, you want to say, that, okay, this time, can we do trainings virtually? There are benefits that comes with doing some of these things in person, of course, the network, the connections that comes with it. But again, in, in very challenging times like this, you want to be sure you conserve cash because you need more cash to run your operations. And therefore, it's very imperative that businesses undertake some more planning. And when I talk about planning and budgeting, you know, even for individuals, when we say, I mean, sometimes when you engage people and say, oh, somebody's in a challenge, they say, oh, what are you doing? They say, oh, I'm praying about it. <laughs> people say these things, they don't even pray. You know, so when you say planning, people say, oh, I'm planning. But people actually don't plan. 
People, That's true. people earn salary. You ask them how much you earn, what do you do with your money? They don't actually plan. People do their planning in their head. But I think that it's very important that when you are planning, you take a pen and a paper, if you are doing pen and paper approach. If you're also doing a laptop, computer, any aid that you use for the planning. Daryl, as you see, a very smart guy. If I ask you to do 96 times 95 for me in a very short second, that would be very difficult to do. <laughs> that would be very difficult. That would be very difficult. So that's what happens when you are doing planning in your head. Yeah. But if I ask you to take a pen and paper and just do 96 and 95 for me, within a short second, you know that the result is about 9,120. You are smart. Very, very smart. <laughs> very, very simple. So, so you see, when you plan without taking time to put things on paper, that would be a very difficult process. And for businesses, businesses actually do planning. They do budgeting. But when it comes to businesses, the difficult aspect is the execution aspect. How do you ensure that whatever you have planned, you are, you are going to execute that plan that you have put in place. And the execution comes with making sure that you put in place mechanisms to ensure that you hold people accountable mm -hmm. for whatever you have put them in charge of. As a leader, for instance, you want to make sure that if you say you are going to have a percentage of a particular market, how do you ensure that the people you have put in charge are delivering to expectations? So the leader cannot go and sit and cannot go and rest at this time. What you want to do is to get involved in the process. You roll up your sleeves and get involved in the whole process from the budgeting right. to the execution and everything. Okay, so, so when you plan, then you, you need to manage uh, the plan, right? Sure. And in these times where we also have economic shocks because sure. things do happen, how, how do you advise businesses to go about it? Particularly, again, seeing that they have to pay several taxes. Yeah, so, so um, the interesting thing is that when it comes to taxes, okay, it's one area that a lot of people don't explore. But in times like this, the tax law has actually made provision for businesses who are not able to meet their tax obligation for particular periods. Mm. If for some reasons you are not able to pay the cash, you can actually write a letter to the Commissioner General and ask for extension of time to pay your tax. Okay, so when you are doing your planning, you need, you've done your cash flow analysis and you know that maybe this particular period we are going to be low on cash, you can quickly put in a letter, a request, either through your consultants or through, I mean, your finance function and make sure you talk to the GRE and come to an agreement. And then once that is accepted, you can do. And then another thing that you need to consider when you are doing the budgeting is, of course, you look at your revenue lines and make sure that I'm going to get this money, and therefore you plan. The tax authorities expect you to file your tax returns, I mean, the, the, to give them an estimate of what tax you pay every year. Right. And that is done by the first quarter. So once you do this, you want to look at what expenses are you supposed to, 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 to incur, what revenues will you get. Then you do an estimate that you are required to pay the taxes on a quarterly basis, first quarter, second okay. quarter. So if you have to re revise that plan, then you can revise and then make sure that you pay the taxes that are due. We just have a minute left, sure. so I want you to use that one minute to advise businesses on some of the recommendations that mm. you feel they can uh, take on during these times to make mm. them successful. Yeah, so for businesses, I would say that, look, these are very difficult times and these are very challenging times, but I would, I would summarize all this into three key um, um, acronyms that I would say. So I'll say PPE. The first P is for you to plan. Uh, make sure that you plan very well and you review that plan. The second P will be to prioritize that plan that you have. Make sure that you, you push forward all the expenses that you need to pay first. And then the third um, item, which is the E, is execute. You have to make sure that you do a flawless execution of your plan. And when you do these things, you are able to uh, stay afloat in times like this. Thank plan, you. Plan, prioritize, and execute. execute. PPE. Thank you so much, Gordon Dade. He's Senior Manager, Tax Unit at KPMG. I think I'm going to have you on another day. Uh, hopefully, we'll see you. And